All right, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I am Jonathan from Boredom Sated. I am Michael from Boredom Sated. And we are here to talk about our next level of monster. We This is the CR2 video. We have, of course, uh, as before, a top five and an honorable mention. Let's continue with a let's go with an honorable mention then. So we're going to start with our honorable mention, which in this case is actually several creatures, because, um, you know, when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, one of the first things that you think of is, I want to fight a mighty dragon. Well, guess what? <laughs> there are dragon whelplings. The young dragons go from CR1 to CR4, and one of the largest contingencies of these whelp dragons comes at CR2. That includes black, green, white, bronze, and silver dragons. So our uh, honorable mention is these dragonlings. Um, just to give you an idea, these dragonlings are quite strong. They have breath weapons that can do things like 3d8, 4d, 3d10, 4d8, I think 5d6. You're looking at real strong for level two for a CR2 creature. But at the same time, it's a baby dragon. This is a small sized creature. It is entertaining just for the fact that. I love the concept of be going like you're in a dungeon and you f go to the dragon's lair and then you see the dragon and it's the size of a puppy. <laughs> and they can fly, which is always an interesting. Uh, oh, tactic. yeah. Always exactly. nice to throw at them. Uh, also, you could do a, for, um, a little uh, building up, like say, oh, there's this horrible dragon coming and burning exactly. all my sheep, whatever it is. And you find out after a while, after a couple of villagers, like, Wait, that thing's the size of a puppy. <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a large cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I love that. That's one of the reasons why I'm definitely a big fan of the dragon, uh, the dragonling. But at the same time, dragons can be very dangerous, which is the reason why we're going to leave them as our honorable mention. Okay. For number five, and we're doing this in a little different order than normal, but I, so I'm doing number five as well. Number five is the centaur. Now, I, we, we talked about the centaur for a couple of reasons. First of all, for damage, they have this charge attack. Yes. The cool. charge attack, if they move at least 30 feet towards a target and then hits it with a pike attack on the same turn, they take an extra 3d6 piercing damage on top of the pike's normal 1d10 plus 4. So a d10 plus 3d6 plus 4 is nothing to sneeze at. So that's a... Oof. What's their uh, movement rate? Uh, they have a f movement speed of 50. Oh, they can do a drive-by. <laughs> they, they can do a drive-by. And not only that, but also they have very high hit points for a CR2. They have 45 hit points for a CR2 creature. That is massive. Now, the main reason why I at least picked uh, Centaur for this list is because Centaurs are neutral good. Diplomacy is an option, people. There's a lot of parties out there, you murder hobos, that don't go for that. But <laughs> if you have a party that actually likes to roleplay, you might be able to get the centaurs on your side or just or be able to uh, reason with them, which is a reason why I think their stats are so strong for a CR2. Yeah. And if you use diplomacy and get them on your side, say two or three, well, then the dungeon master will say, oh, hey, that means the encounter, next encounter can be a little more tougher. <laughs> exactly. Centaurs are a fantastic monster, but again, they are only number five on our list. Yeah. Which brings us to number four. Now, this particular creature is... Um, have you ever seen the movie The Thing? That's what this <laughs> thing looks like. It is the gibbering mouther. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is... To say hideous would be an understatement. It's just all eyes and mouths and role-playing that thing. Is hilarious. And gibbering. <laughs> <laughs> now, it has some interesting uh, abilities. It can try and bite you if you get close enough to you. Uh, but it also has a gibbering ability, which is its, well, its name, the gibbering mouther. <laughs> and this causes all sorts of uh, mental um, problems in your party. And um, at CR2, this might be the first time they encounter such a special attack. It can also spit a little bit of acid as well. So it has some ranged ability, what's, uh, but it's not a devastating, not like a breath weapon. But it's still, it gives you several different combat options. Plus, it's bloody hideous. <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to go next to number three on the list, which is the ogre. Now, why the ogre, you might ask? It's big, it's brutish, what's not the like? And it hits like a truck. <laughs> it hits, hits like hard. a truck. It's what's that damage? Oh, ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous damage. Um, I think it's like 2d8 something. 2d8 uh, plus 4 is yeah, the it does base a, damage of an ogre. Yeah, <sighs> it is. Uh, yeah, it, it does an average of 13, I think, is the average. I'm like, that's um, almost, I mean, that might be a wizard's hit points right there, or a sorcerer's hit points at level Pretty. two. You can knock them out, yeah. And if he gets a crit, forget about it. <laughs> um, but they are a very easy character, uh, easy monster to fit into your campaign and a wide variety of uh, encounters. A wandering ogre bandit, a guy who's just simply guarding um, this crime lord's treasure. You're like, oh, hey, we go in there. Oh, it's Andre the Giant. <laughs> it's... That would be um, my visual for an ogre. Uh, Andre a little bit bigger, but still. Could um, also just be, like, the bodyguard of the boss. The bodyguard. Just to have that, like... The big heavy. The extra the, muscle. Yeah. Him and a club is just a devastating combination and definitely a challenge for a CR2 uh, party. Then my uh, next... Uh, our next um, choice is number two. Now, this is a very situational but an amazingly wonderful um, monster. It is the Mimic. The Mimic Lofty. can be anything it wants to be. It's a shape... Uh, um, most people think of the Mimic uh, most of the time as a, a treasure chest. Okay, that's obviously very um, traditional. But and devious. Um, yes, a devious. You see several treasure chests. Immediately, the party goes into, oh, thief, go. And then the thief's the one who gets smacked in the face first by the Mimic. <laughs> I have seen games, by the way, where the thief yeah. goes and then the thief gets eaten and gets killed in, in like the first <laughs> round of being attacked by Mimics. <laughs> but the Mimic could be other things. It can shape change into almost any type of object. So it could be a, a carpet, it could be a lampshade, anything. And after a while, uh, for those uh, DMs out there who like to utilize, inflict Mimics on their party... Um, on their group, uh, people will start uh, uh, being more, players will be more cautious in any room where they see furniture from then onwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, quick shout out to um, TFS at the Table for using Mimics very effectively in their season one. Uh, <laughs> and that's, uh, that's to um, uh, Mr. Uh, Zito. Yeah. That was – it's great, uh, Chris. Yeah, yeah. He, he he did a great job of making it so that not only did the, the, the mimics end up being able to mess with characters, they thought almost yeah. anything could be a mimic, but the number <laughs> of things that became mimics, especially in that early part of that season, were fantastic. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, if you're interested in a very fun and entertaining game, go ahead and check that out. Yeah. You'll see some real fun stuff with mimics as well as some other entertaining things, including something with a centaur. Uh, but that will move on to our number one, and our number one is the Intellect Devourer. Because remember, this list is not for the players. This list is for the GMs. The Intellect Devourer is a dick. <laughs> a real big, like, just horrible, horrible creature. So the Intellect Devourer has a special ability. First of all, this is the first... Um, this is the first illithid type creature. This is a basic mind flayer. And oh my god, is it nasty. Mind flayers. <laughs> so, it has an ability called Devour Intellect. And this is its basic attack. In mm -hmm. fact, its basic thing is that it will try to claw you, and it will try to devour someone's intellect in the party. Actually, here, let's start with the best, best part of it. It can sense you from 300 feet. Wow. As long as you have a brain, and you have an intelligence of at least three. It can sense you from 300 feet away. <sighs> That's nasty. Possibility is endless. <laughs> it's got blind sense, so don't try to go invisible. Not going to help. Um, then, so devour intellect. You have to make an intelligent saving throw, and the number of people in this, in this edition that have intelligence as their dump stat is so high. Because remember, in previous editions, intelligence meant how many skills you had. In this one, it doesn't make a difference. If you have an intelligence of 8, you have the same number of skills as someone who has an intelligence of 18. Yeah. This is a huge, huge thing, but because 
they make you take an intelligence saving throw. And if you fail that save, you take 2d10 force damage. That doesn't sound that bad. The next part is what gets you. If it, you fail that save, it rolls 3d10, uh, 3d6. And if it beats or ties your intellect score, your intellect becomes zero. Yeah, that's rough. And oh, then God. Yeah. God. It gets worse. Because if you get knocked to zero, then it can try to have an intelligence battle with you. And your intelligence is zero. Its intelligence is 12. So I'm pretty sure. Oh, right. Yeah, it wins. Um, <laughs> unless it rolls very, 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 very poorly. So what happens is um, it eats your brain. Your brain is gone and it inhabits your body. So you're dead. And now it will inhabit your body with its mental stats and your physical stats. So guess what? That fighter or that barbarian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. And now <laughs> you're fighting for the party. <laughs> Oof. Intellect it's devour is rough. so nasty. And you've got to be you you got to be mean to throw that against a level two party, especially yeah. if they're they're in that mind frame. But sometimes sometimes parties need that little boost or that little check to make sure that they understand they're not invincible. True. True, true, true. They need a little wake-up call. And it also helps them over time. I mean, if you're going to be in a campaign for any... You have to be um, uh, prepared for all sorts of unusual things. Not just monsters coming at you and beat them up until, and rinse and repeat and take that treasure. Things have to... Like, uh, the intellect devourer has a tremendous advantage. It, it looks like a... First of all, it looks like a brain with, 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 with uh, paws. Yeah. Yeah. Most part. yeah, it has no eyes. Um, so that means it's, and then of course it can sense intellects. It can it sense your brain. It can't be blinded. So in darkness, it's like, it's it's perfectly fine. It's adapt. Whereas darkness is a hamper to a lot of races because, well, either low light vision or they have no dark vision. In the uh, fifth edition, not many uh, races have, uh, uh, player races have dark vision. So... It's a perfect ambush creature. And guess what? If it takes over your, 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 your tank early on, wow. It's just rough. Yeah. Now, one thing that we should mention again, the ogre and the centaur, their hit points are, I believe both of them are in the 40s. The intellect devourer to make it up for the fact that it has resistances to most physical damage mm -hmm. and, and all of that, it only has 21 hit points. Mm -hmm. So it's very killable. But its offense is so powerful and can be very powerful. But as soon as it makes that, if you make that intellect save, you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. True enough. Well, that's our list on the second of CR2s for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. If you uh, enjoyed our video, hit a like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and we'll see you next time on Board and Sated. And if you like this list, you should also put in your own list because we always like to see what everyone else thinks about, uh, see what creatures they're thinking is there as well. I'm Jonathan. That's Mike. See you later.